communicate this 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 scripture now when you hear authority and government and all these things always think about uh this sort of control and this sort of um you just gotta obey without any sort of question because they know now is that true should anyone listen to their parents blindly should anyone listen to what their father or mother say without any questions? No. Why not? Why you shouldn't listen to your father or your mother or your parents without any questions? <coughs> Why? If we say no, we must have a reason too. We must. Because every instruction demands what? Clarification. Directive. So now we're talking about holy. Now y Yahweh is given a command to who Israel is saying, Be holy for I am holy. Now is this a command? Is this a demand? Is this like an authoritarian or despot rule? Is it? No. Why is not? Because we see with the children of Israel what they did. Were they holy? No. No. And what we remember, what we said last week, to be holy means to prepare for a task. Right? To dedicate all resources. To prepare for a task and dedicate all resources. So now when you are holy, you are prepared for a task and you dedicate all your resources. Resources. So now if we take that definition back to the creator, he is what? Prepared for a task. But he is not prepared in the sense of his ahad because he is one. But who now is prepared for that task? Yeshua. Yeshua. Because we read in Isaiah, said, who shall go for us? And, Yesh and Isaiah said not. Send me, Lord, to reconcile Israel unto himself. So we see now that Yeshua was prepared for this task before the foundation of the earth. And why he was prepared for this task is to show us that we too can what? Be prepared and dedicate all our resources to what? To his calling. To his kingdom. So now Somebody find Luke 4, 20, um, 34 for me and read it. Luke 4, 34. And we are, we are the holy nation. Uh, I think it's in James, one of them. We are a holy generation, a royal priesthood. Oh, no, it's, uh, I think it's in James. James or one of the, um, one of those letters. Um, um, we are a holy na um, nation, um, a royal priesthood. Um, James or Peter. Um, um, we are a holy generation, a holy... Um, 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 scripture just keep uh, the formation, right? A holy nation. And if we are a holy nation, mean we ought to be preparing for a task. Now, when we hear the word holy from the Greek, right? When you go into your strongs, you can look at it, you can look it up under the number 40. It means hagios. And hagios means sacred. A physical, physical, pure, moral, morally blameless or religiously consecrated. That's what holiness or holy mean in the Greek. But that still doesn't give you a meaning of what that word means because it gives us a whole lot of what? Adjectives that now only compound in what what? What other words are now describing this thing to be? This scripture is 1 Peter 2.9. Right, 1 Peter 2.9. I know it's in Peter or James. Right? We, um, we are a holy priesthood. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, holy. holy nation, holy nation, a holy nation, 
a man a peculiar people, a peculiar people. Show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <coughs> right? We are a holy, a holy, I'm a holy nation. Uh, yes. Look for verse 24. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. All right, we are a Kodesh door, right? A holy, what? Generation, holy generation. Yes. A holy nation, holy nation, holy generation, holy people, right? So now what, what, what we are actually seeing is that the angels recognize who this, what is holy, what has been fully prepared for this task that is at hand. This journey that is at hand. So now, what I want us to focus on this week, you see this word Kodesh, Kodosh, and Kodosh. Same word, but what this one is missing? The Wav. Now, what's the importance of this Wav? What's the importance of that Wav? What's the importance of that wav? What, num what number letter this wav is? The sixth letter. And what we say the sixth letter is again? Is the letter of man. So now we know the letter of man. We're talking about man in his fullness. Man in his completeness. Man was created. And how man was created? Perfect. Without spot or wrinkle. Man was created how? Kitov. Kitov meaning very good. He was Kitov meaning he was functioning according to what? Design. So now, if we have been called to be Kodesh, so now when you're looking at the Hebrew scripture or the English, the English scripture, you will never see this word here like this. And even if you're going to the Strong's, the Strong's is going to give you two different words for these two different, for this, this word and this word. Right? One is 6944 and 6918. 6918 has to do with the wav. The wav that is in the literal word Kodosh. And that means it mala, it's full, it's full, it's rich. And this one is hashak, it's lacking. So now what, what, you, what you're seeing going on here in the English is not clear in what it's really saying. So this is why now when they, tr when they translate holy into the Greek, with the Greek with the, when they translate the Hebrew into the, the Greek, the Septuagint, right, you have Hagios, which is the word they translate for holy, which means what? Physically pure. How something can be physically pure? How something can be physically pure? Right? Morally blameless. How something can be morally blameless? Because now mankind is what? It's fallen. And could man mankind be what? Physically pure? Could mankind be what? Morally blameless? No. Religiously consecrated? Could anything be religiously consecrated? We know before Yeshua came, we, they had the temple. And the temple, there were certain things in the temple. We had the lamb style, we had the table of showbread, and then we have the altar of the what? The Ark of the Covenant. 
So we had this cross where we had us to actually go in from the outer courtyard coming in and we're making that cross, that actual picture that the cross, that the temple represents as they enter into the holies of holies because the holies of holies is at the top of the cross that actually signify that mark, that oath that he has placed upon the face of the earth for mankind to see. All is written, all is etched within scripture. Because when you hear you speak about scripture, you're speaking about what? That would be mystery. And we see that throughout the scripture, Yeshua spoke in what? Parables. And anytime he's speaking parables, the, some of the disciples and they ask him, why do you speak in parables? Why do you speak in mystery? Because the Hebraic culture, they were known to have everything in what? Mysteries. Everything was in scripture. And when you're studying the Hebraic text, you will find that the Hebraic text is rich in mystery. There are a lot of clues that are etched within scripture that is not seen in the English. Because remember I said before, Hebrew is, re is read from right to left. In the Hebrew text, when you look at it, one of you guys over the internet, you can go get a a, to a Torah, a Tanakh, and you can look at it and you're going to see their minuscule letter, letters that are smaller in size, and their majuscule letter, letter that are letters that are larger in size, and they are upside down letters, right? Even whole words, and there are a little circle over the, these letters that actually give the information for what is actually being communicated. It's not like these sages, and then when they were writing, you know, they get tired, they make a big letter, and they left it there. No, because scripture is sacred. They take it, it was so sacred that they 